All right then, so now we've linked up all of these libraries in the head, we're ready to start using Materialize and the different CSS components and JavaScript components that it brings to the table. So first of all, we've already created an H1 and we can see that over here in the browser and we can see already it's different from a default browser style. The fact that we've got Materialize loaded into our head now means that the default browser styles are slightly different because before, without that, this would be Times New Roman and now it's this font down here, okay? So I wanna show you some of the basic default styles that comes shipped with Materialize for things like text. So before we do that, let me just delete this H1 for now and make a bit of space. What we're gonna do is put everything inside a surrounding element. And this element is gonna be a div and that div is gonna have a class of container. So this container class right here, this is a Materialize class, but what does it do exactly? Well, it keeps everything inside a central column. It gives it a left margin and a right margin and makes the max width of that column a certain amount of pixels for different screen sizes. And I'll demonstrate that to you in a second. So let's just add in an H1 first of all. And this H1 can say something like, hey ninjas. All right, so let's just preview that for a second over here in the browser. Okay, so we can see this H1 now and it's not flush to the left. That's because we've placed it inside this container and we can see if we hover over the container, that margin left and right. If we click on it, we can see that the max width at the minute is 1280 pixels and the width itself is 90%. So 90% of this current area right here and the rest is made up of margin. So if I make this larger, then we're gonna see the different widths of these things. Now we can see it's 70% right here at this screen size, okay? So as we move it down, the width becomes different and you can see it jump between breakpoints. So by putting things in a container, we're always ensuring that we're kind of centrally aligning our content. I don't mean centrally aligning the text, I mean creating a column in the center of the page with a margin left and right, okay? So it's never flush up against the left or the right. So that's a nice way to work always to place things in containers unless you actually want them flush up to the left or right. All right, so that's containers. Now what we're gonna do is just cycle through the different H tags, the heading tags. So we'll do an H2 and we'll say H2 title. And then below that, we'll do an H3. So H3 and then H3 title. And then below that, we'll do an H4. I think you get the idea now, H4 title. And we'll do an H5 an H5 title, and then finally an H6 and H6 title, just so we can see what these different headings look like on the screen. All right, so we can see now they get smaller, which is kind of obvious as you get a larger number in the heading, they should get smaller, H1 being most important, H6 being the least important. And if we inspect one of these, we're gonna see that the font size is actually using REMS right here, R-E-M, and that means root M, and an M is a relative measurement. So what this basically means is, okay, take a look at the root element, because it's a REM, which is the HTML over here. That has a font size of 14 pixels. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that root element value of the font size right here, then we're gonna times it by 4.2. So if this was two REMS, for example, it would be 28 pixels, because two times 14, so two rem, and that would be the same as, look at this right here, it's not gonna change in size, 28 pixels, all right? So that's what rems are all about. This was 4.2 rems, and we can see they get smaller as they go down. All right, so that's the basic kind of styles of headings. Also, we'll do a P tag, and inside here, we'll just say this is a paragraph, just in case you didn't know. All right, save that. And we can see this styling for the paragraph right here. If we inspect that, we can see that the font size is just inheriting this 14 pixels right here and this font family. So nothing much going on right there. But we also have a special type of paragraph and that is gonna be using a class called flow text. So if I say p.flow hyphen text and inside here we'll do something like this is flow text save it and view that in a browser then we can see this is a bit bigger so if we inspect this now we can see the font size it's increased a little bit 
times that 14 pixels. All right. So that changes slightly dependent on the screen size as well. So as the screen gets bigger, the text gets bigger. And as the screen gets smaller, the text is going to get smaller as well. So I like to use this flow text for things like introductions to paragraphs, or if you have a blog, maybe the first line or the first couple of lines of that blog, uh, just to lead you into the paragraph, the bit that stands out at the start. So there we go. There's the basic kind of text and font styles of these different headings and paragraphs. So now we know that in the next video, we'll move on a little bit and we'll look at hiding and showing content based on different screen sizes.